instead of saying basics, instead of saying basics, I try to think of the word foundation instead. And so if I say that my students need a foundation to their tap dance training, then I feel a little bit different about it and my mind goes to a different place about it and I have a different attitude about it if I'm saying foundation instead of basics. And it's hard for me to say, my students just need a foundation. It doesn't sound like a small thing anymore. But when people say, they just need the basics, it starts to sound like this small thing that gets minimized and taken for granted and often is not even effectively taught. But if I'm taking it seriously that my house needs a foundation, if the foundation isn't proper, it's like, who's put the foundation in? Like, who are these people that are dealing with the foundation in my house? You kind of want to know that. So in that spirit, if, if I'm thinking about the foundation of tap dance training, so when you look at your studio, you might ask yourself, who are you entrusting with the foundation of your student's tap dance training? Who are you entrusting to give these students the foundation? Is it the youngest teacher that you have? Is it the youngest person with the least amount of experience? Um, are they even a teacher yet at all? Because sometimes it's a student who's not even an, 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 a teacher yet. They're the most advanced dancer you have at the studio, but of course that doesn't make you a teacher, right? But so are they, like, who is this that we're entrusting to give the foundation to your youngest students? And asking ourselves, like, do they have a skill set? Do they have a skill set to bring out really solid technique out of our youngest, youngest students? And I think that's an important thing. So if we're not doing that, then one, we're passing along bad habits that need to be broken. And hopefully they get broken at some point along the line or else they're out in the world and they can't manage a basic triplet on a hop shuffle like I've talked about in earlier episodes of my little chat here. Right, so that's problem one. Problem two is a missed opportunity, right? And so maybe this isn't something that you've thought about. Like it's understandable that you have, you know, your youngest, Teachers, you know, it's, it's understandable. It's very common that we have our youngest teachers um, in there with the baby students. You put your youngest teachers with your youngest students. There's tons of logic behind it uh, for studio owners, but I want us to think about another potential opportunity. And that opportunity is to help these students fall in love with tap dance, to help them achieve to the point where they have a demand to move into full one hour classes. Many studios see a drop off between combo class participation with tap dance and the demand for their actual tap dance classes for full tap dance classes. There typically is a drop off. And why is that happening? And I think one of the reasons that that's happening is because there's not enough skill and there's not enough momentum being built in those combo classes that would feed a student's desire to want to continue with their tap dance training. It's almost like, are they learning just enough to like vaccinate them against it? Like and go, ah, that's not really for me. Um, or are they really getting into it? Are they learning like, oh my gosh, like I can make music with my feet and this is this amazing thing. And we have like a fun routine where we're really doing tap dance, like we sound good as a little group. And then that is something where you go, I wanna sign up for that again, right? But if that stuff isn't happening, then sure, I wanna move on with, you know, like the more serious dancing, right? I wanna get into the, like the stuff, the ballet or the contemporary or the jazz and the things where you really feel like you're growing. But if you don't feel like you're growing in the tap side of the combo class, then yeah, there's not gonna be demand for it. And so in terms of business stability, business security, uh, for studio owners mindset, I'm just talking to them for a second, like that is a missed opportunity. If you have somebody in the room with your youngest student who is really high quality and has really have a solid skill set, regardless of their age, that they have a really solid skill set and they're really getting recognizable like musicality and solid, you know, beginning approaches to the footwork, solid foundation under them. It's much more likely that they're going to continue to grow in your tap program at your studio over the years. So I think that we're missing that opportunity when we do the just the basics and we kind of babysit the class a little bit. Then it's like, just fill 20 minutes, play freeze dance. Okay. Like, yeah, play freeze dance. But if you only have 30 minutes, don't play freeze dance. There's so many other things that can be done, right? There's plenty of other things that, we can, that can be done to support the foundation of your students' tap dance training and fostering their love of tap dance as they move through the years. So like, let's not like waste time with things like that when we can play games, absolutely play games, but play games that are fostering musicality, play games that are helping them to get a solid approach to the floor. Like that kind of stuff 
that can really help to feed their technique in a proper way um, and also feed their passion for the form.